Good evening, everybody. I'm Rick Dancer. Welcome to Get Real with Rick Dancer. And yeah, I'm a tad bit early tonight, but I've got a really good interview. It's a little bit long. So I thought, eh, you know what? I'm just going to go on a bit early and, uh, and see what happens. Because what we do know from our numbers is that most of you people watch this after it's live. <laughs> so we do it live, though, just because I like the interaction and kind of what's going on with people. And I do like when you guys make comments and stuff like that. Um, real quick, uh, we have our advertisers tonight. And why do we have advertisers? Well, here, because here's our January numbers. We reached 486,000 accounts in January. Um, our numbers are climbing. They're going up. The more honest we get, the more our numbers rise. So what we what we did experience for a while was a decline in numbers because Facebook was throttling us, which they've kind of shut, cut back a little bit on since Twitter got sold. So that's been a big thing. Plus, I think people like you and me, we're just damn tired of it. And so we are not going to be silent. We're not going to be quiet. We're going to speak up. We're going to have our voices heard. The truth still matters. And we're not going to put up with this crap anymore. Um, when we've got um, the president of the United States, they found more stuff, classified documents in his other house. Um, if, if, if you are someone on the very far progressive left and you do not hear this and you're not you're not paying attention, um, you need to wake up because your president is ruining this country. And the rest of us aren't going to sit by and watch it happen. Here's an interesting thing that came across the wire. I've got a really cool interview for you tonight. So anyway, our sponsors are Chris Dental Family Dentistry and Denture Center. Um, Michael Bratlin is big on freedom, big on taking care of his country, and um, big on taking care of you and your dental needs. He now has a denturist on staff, and they can take care of crowns, that, hygiene. In fact, I talked to his hygienist today. We're going to put some stuff out on teeth brushing. And uh, she was amazing. She's really, really good. Our other uh, sponsor, BS Free MD, uh, Tim and May. They're going to be coming on a little bit later at the end of the show. I got a little video from them telling you what's coming up on their show. They're groundbreaking stuff, too. If you're not listening to them, you really need to find them. BS, like bullshit, BS Free MD. And you find them on Spotify and all your favorite little channels. But they do some really great work, have some super interesting interviews, and they're also one of our sponsors. And we have a new sponsor, a Montana sponsor, our first. We got two this month. One's coming on in a couple of weeks. But our first, our sponsor, is Montana Oral Surgeons. And uh, they do oral surgery here in the Helena area. And they're awesome people. And we're going to start introducing you online to their doctors. What we do now is... They start, our sponsors are sponsoring our show, so we mention them here. So people, um, you know, in Montana who are watching will know this one, and the other rest of you will. But we're also providing content for our audience or for our, our sponsors. So we're doing interviews for them to put on websites and to put out on social media, and then they in turn are sponsoring our show. So that's kind of how it works. If you're somebody out there and you're looking for, um, you know, obviously viewers. Uh, people to hear your name. That's the good thing. But you also want content, little interviews of information that you're doing. That's what we do. Um, so tonight our interview is with a young man that you're going to really appreciate. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about him in a second. But I really want to tell you this. Greater Idaho, you know, the movement in Oregon to move the border, to include huge chunks of eastern Oregon and southeastern Oregon uh, into the state of Idaho. Um, in Oregon, it's been uh, trying to get on the floor, and uh, but right now the Democrats will not let it get out. It will not, they're not letting it out onto the floor, so that they're probably not even gonna discuss it. But in Idaho, a bill that would invite Oregon to begin talks with the Idaho legislature about relocating their state lines was unanimously awarded a bill number, it's HJM1, by the House of Representatives State Affairs Committee today after a short discussion. It's going to be read and they're going to have on the 13th of February, which is kind of funny, then they're going to be talking about that at nine o'clock. So that's just the, one, of the, one of the hurdles that they have. I can't remember how many counties have signed on and said they wanted to be a part of that. And now Idaho is looking at a bill as of today that will open the door that um, Oregon counties that want to move could. Now, they still need congressional approval. They still need 
Oregon to put the damn bill on the out on the docket so people can at least talk about it. But what happens a lot of times in Oregon is rather than give people a chance to say something that the tyrannists in our state government um, don't let the bills out so that what, what Oregonians want can't happen. So this is how they control people. Well, guess what, uh, leaders in Oregon, your time is is growing near um, because Oregonians and they're fed up with you and they're not going to put up with it anymore. And what's going to look really bad for you, legislators and Governor Kotek, is that if Idaho puts out this bill and uh, welcomes Oregon to look into this process and you don't even allow people in Oregon to look at the process, that's going to say everything about your tyrannical view and what you're doing to your state. Because it's, it's your fault that they don't want to be with you anymore because you don't listen to them. So if you're not going to listen to them, let them go someplace that will. And one of the things they said in this press release that I found super interesting was, um, oh, here, hold on. They said in here, one of the things they're looking at which would help, um, one of the sponsors, Representative Boyle, I think is the one saying this, um, this will help with the influx of people to the current counties in Idaho as some of the migration from Oregon is politically motivated, most of it. The proposal relocation would increase Idaho's territory by 74% while increasing the state's population by 21%, according to the greater Idaho people. So even Idaho sees that all these Oregonians are moving into their state. Well, why not just Put the state here and, and stop the in, in influx and let people stay in Oregon in the eastern counties where they want to be um, without having to leave the state because they come become part of Idaho. Great discussion. It's a cool thing. Um, I love the fact that Oregon lawmakers are showing their hypocrisy by holding off on that bill. So hopefully they'll get some pressure and push through on that a little bit. Um, what else was I going to tell you about? Anyway. Um, oh, I was going to recommend if you are a person who enjoys um, educating yourself, which I do, and if you're somebody who's not afraid to listen to other things, Joe Rogan has an interview out on his Joe Rogan experience, and it is with Jordan Peterson. And the episode number is 13 or excuse me, 1933. 1933. I highly recommend you go listen to this. Um, if you're someone who's counts yourself on the progressive left, it may piss you off a little bit, but it's going to tell you what a lot of people are thinking. If you tend to be more like in the middle or a little bit to the right, you're going to love this. Listen to it today on the way to work. It, it is, I am highly, this is, this is a, I don't mean to be overly exuberant about this, but this is an earth shattering, life changing podcast for me. Um, the, you know, up until I saw my numbers today and I saw what people, I was kind of, you know, you, you kind of get tired of standing up in front and, and getting beaten the hell out of. But now it's like, you know what? Screw you. I'm, I'm not, I am not going to be silent and people are waking up. When you don't listen to people for so long and you are so hypocritical, um, it catches up with you. And I think your days are numbered. I really do. Um, yeah, Nicholas, it's one, it is one of the best episodes ever. And I think uh, Rogan is breaking groundbreaking stuff and Jordan Peterson has some things planned. Um, so if you're one of those people who listens to the media and you think, oh, Jordan Peterson, he's evil and he's that, go listen to the podcast. It'll either change your mind or, or make you believe the same thing even deeper. <laughs> there, I'll give you that. So... One of the things um, that Kathy and I have been you know, going through, we've been here a year now in Montana. We're super happy. Um, life is not perfect, but you know what? It's kind of like, if you, it, it's kind of like that Nicholas It's kind of like the episode of the, of what he's talking about today, you know, back in, 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 uh, in, in Pharaoh's time when, when uh, all the people were enslaved, the Jews were enslaved and God finally got Moses and used him as a catalyst to set his people free he didn't want people living under tyranny or under slavery. Um, what he wanted was his people to be free. And but but the problem is once you get free, then you wander because you have to figure out, OK, I've been living this way for so long. How do I do it differently? 
how do I live differently? How do I understand people that they're, they're not giving me hate stares? They're not doing bad things. They're not going to, you know, they're not tyrannical here. Um, how do I understand that? And I think it's to leave. It doesn't mean you have to leave the place you live. It doesn't mean you have to leave the town you live in or the state just because I did. Um, but what it means is you have to leave something behind uh, and wander. There's a great bumper sticker that says, just because I wander doesn't mean I'm lost. The young man you're about to meet, um, I saw on his Facebook page that he was hinting around that he was leaving. And this is an outstanding young man. And I wrote him real fast and I said, Ben, I need to talk to you. I want you on my podcast. So the other day uh, we did an interview and I'm going to air that for you tonight. And then at the end of it, I'll have a little bit more to say. And, but I want you to kind of take this in because I think it all ties in really nicely. So let's, uh, let's welcome um, Benjamin Elliott. Hi, I'm Rick Dancer uh, with Get Real with Rick, with Rick Dancer. I can't even say the name of my show right now. Um, I'm excited to have the next guy on here. It's not his first time. Um, we've done this before with him. But I saw something that Benjamin posted, um, and I knew that you guys would really like to watch this. Um, so uh, he, I, I was on Facebook looking down the, the scroll, got a little hint that um, – that this person was looking at uh, a big change in his life. And uh, as it turns out, I was, you know, one of the few people that got the hint. So I connected with him and said, hey, Ben, you got to come on here and talk to me about this. Um, this is my man, Benjamin Elliott. How you doing, buddy? Doing good. How about you, my man? I'm good. How old are you? Oh, 34. He's 34 years old. Where are you from? I live here in Eugene, Oregon, currently for a couple more days. Grew up on the coast of Oregon in Yahats, which is actually where I met you for the very first time. Yeah, that's where I met. And then you used to work at Newman's Fish Market there in Eugene, and you'd show me the good fish, which was the good stuff to get <laughs> and all that kind of stuff, which my wife, you know what I said, Ben? It's funny. I said, honey, I'm going to interview Ben today, Ben Elliott. And she goes, now, who's that? And I go, remember that at the fish guy at Newman's? And she goes, oh, yeah, with red hair? And I went, yeah. <laughs> she goes, it's like, you're the fish guy, you know? Hair is not so red anymore, though. <laughs> but, well, Mine's not brown either, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ben, um, so the last um, – you're just kind of a novelty. You do all kinds of interesting things. And I remember you met a young man on my show, and it kind of really impacted and started this – kind of give people a little synopsis of, of that story. Yeah, so, you know, it's funny. I actually – so before um, – I started working with him and his family. It actually was a family down in Arizona that I just randomly had connected with. Um, I knew I started wanting to do some like a bike challenge having to do with childhood cancer after my dad passed away. Um, and then um, when I got together with Nico, it kind of turned out to where, and that's the kid in Arizona, where just things kind of fell in place and I got the right connections to be able to meet up with different NFL teams, NBA teams, and then... And this was a terminal, uh, a person who had a terminal illness. Yes, and he, he's still, he's actually doing real well. Um, but, you know, that just led to another kid and another kid and another kid. And then you, you came on, you messaged me one day before the first show that you did with, with that family here in Oregon. And um, instantly was just like, all right, time to go again, you know, and it was a, it was a crazy, um, emotional, but great experience. And you, you connected really well with this young man. He was how old? Uh, he just turned uh, 14 last year. Um, we had a big 14th birthday party for him. Probably the largest car show um, that's ever happened in, in the state of Oregon, I would imagine. And then recently he passed. He did, yeah. So how did that kind of impact your decision? And tell people what your decision is, what you're doing. Um, I think so his passing itself wasn't necessarily the, the ultimate decision. It was kind of something that I've been, I mean, honestly wanting to do for years and just haven't really ever taken the leap to do it. I don't know if I was afraid to do it. Or if I just 
that knew there was that chance of failure, you know, or it, maybe the, the reward wasn't worth the risk, but you never really know until you, until you do it. So I started um, a couple of years back looking at doing these programs where I would go work in on a farm or something. It's basically a work. Um, I think it's called a work stay program where you, um, you get bored. Sometimes you get food um, once, twice, three times a day. Um, and this, though, is way different than anything I ever expected I was going to do, even though it's always kind of a dream of mine. So what do you uh, do? Tell them what you're doing. All right. So I am heading down to to New Mexico. It's um, in between small town in between Albuquerque and Phoenix, just on the Albuquerque or the Mex- New Mexico border. Um, I'm heading down there on Wednesday where I'm going to be helping, uh, run and revitalize a ranch that had shut down during COVID. It's, uh, basically a free range, uh, goat ranch. And obviously they have all sorts of different animals, but our job is to maintain the ranch. Um, my first day there, I actually get a butcher, a goat and ducks and things like that. But, um, yeah, so I'm going to be going up there. The plan right now is typically the plan would be three weeks to three months staying up there. But um, my plan is to make that at least a year, if not longer, um, to the point where I would actually be helping them as they get older, helping them train the new people that come in to help them run, run the ranch. So um, why do you want to do that? The experience, um, you know, I, I mean, it might sound weird, but I like cheese is one of my favorite things in the world. And, um, when COVID first started, they had to shut their company down, but this lady, um, Nancy is her name, um, runs the only organic, um, goat, goat sheep operation in the entire Southwest. Um, and I just found that really intriguing, like um, getting in there. And the coolest part of all, though, is, I mean, that's all cool. But the closest town from where we're going to be is actually two and a half hours away. Um, so when I say off the grid, I mean, you're like, it's like the wilderness of Alaska, but New Mexico, you know. Well, that's um, why we're doing this interview today, too, because from here on out, you leave on Tuesday and you're going to be in transit and then you're going to be kind of away from the world yeah yeah there there's no cell phone service where i'm at the wi-fi can only be turned on for a short time of day um that's if it works um i mean when you know you live a town in a two hours from the nearest town of 180 people you're not really gonna gonna get much but there's we live off solar power the water we're, we'll be drinking is actually rainwater that is caught off like from the rainstorms through the year. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's out of touch with the entire world. And that's just kind of what, it's what I need, but I think it's what a lot of people. Really what do you, what do you, why do you need that? What are you thinking? T- to be me, I think, you know, I've always been that kind of small town guy. Like I've always wanted to be live in a secluded area. And at one point I lived in Yahats and decided it would be a good idea to move to Eugene. <laughs> it was, it, it was at the time. It was at the time, but, but you, um, went, back, you went back. Yeah, I, I did. <laughs> I did. And then I came back. <laughs> so, um, you, so tell me about your fear. What is your fear at this point? Um, you know, that's, That's hard. Um, I think right now, the only fear is making sure that I can be financially set for the first couple of months because I'm not going to be, it's not something I'm getting paid for to do. Um, You know, down the road, it might be if I end up becoming like their main man there, you know, Um, room and board is free, but I guess um, I think we always fear finances though. Um, You know, and I'm like, I'm like, uh, what medical bills should I pay off before I go? You know, which ones are important? Um, and just, I guess, making sure that in a sense that I'm going to be 
set for the next few months. After that, it's okay. Um, I'll be good. Um, I mean, I, I'm probably going with <laughs> probably living off of about 900 to a thousand bucks for a few months, but and that includes needing to get better cold weather equipment because when you live at 8,000 feet, 9,000 feet in the desert, it's actually like the weather you have now, you know, up north. Yeah. Yeah. So is there something inside of you that is just like really excited? Like this is, you want to find Ben, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. And it, you know, I, I want to be able to be almost not necessarily more extroverted again, but let that side of me shine a little more. You know, I've, I've become, definitely become an introverted person more over the years. Um, it's kind of, I, I do like my own like home body itself, you know, um, but also getting to meet new people that I can like know, like you meet them, you know, they're real and be able to stay connected with with different people and find other places to do this in the future if this isn't the place i want to stay but i do feel like you know the family out there wants me to stay um so if i can make this the new thing where i just live there for good i'm all right with that so how did you meet them um so it's actually a um it's i think it's worldpackers.com it's basically a um, you know, you're finding people that need, need help a lot. Of, it's usually actually hostile work. Uh, farm work is the other big thing. Um, but there's no, nothing else I found that was like this far off the grid, you know, like, so, so why do you want to be that far off the grid? Like, what is it? How do you explain that? You don't experience, uh, you don't experience the beauty of nature as much in town in town you when you're surrounded by a whole bunch of people i feel like you have to worry about what's always going on you know what i mean like living up at the ranch there's gonna be i mean anywhere between three of us myself and the the owners of the ranch and two or three other people at the most and that is within, I mean, literally two hours. There will not be another soul within a, our. So, do you, think, do you think the reason most people won't do what you're doing is that we're afraid to be by ourselves or with ourselves? Yeah. Um. And I, I that, and I think the, I mean, I think that's the biggest thing. Um, I think the other thing is in general, just being afraid of, of change, you know, whether, you know, it's going to be good change or bad change. It's, I mean, it's a big, big thing, especially after doing this for 30, you know, living the same life for 34 years. And suddenly I'm like, well, I'm moving next week. Don't you think there's also part of that? Cause you and I are kind of in the same, I mean, I'm not doing the same extreme that you're doing, but I moved a thousand miles away and to a place I don't know. And don't you think one of the big things that keeps people from this kind of change is the fear of failing? What if it doesn't? Oh work? yeah. What if I don't like it? Yeah. If- um, I think, yeah, the failure or not even failure, just getting there and being afraid that it wasn't necessarily what you thought you wanted. So what's the crazy part about that though, Ben? You know what I mean? Like, even when I say failure, it's like, how can you, you can't fail. If you no. step out and do something, you it may not be what you thought it was going to be. And you may not like it. Like you thought you were going to like it, but then you just change it again. I mean, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? And even you, you and I are in two different places in our lives. I'm in getting close to a retirement age there. But my wife and I, that's what people were saying. Oh, but you know, you're, you're settled here in Oregon and da, 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 da. And I said, I am not settled anywhere. Do you feel like, I feel like for me, and I know you're kind of, you and I are kind of alike this way. I feel like I have this nomad inside of me and 
and I stayed too long in one place because I was lured by money, the job, uh, the prestige, um, you know, and, and, and it's like, and now it's like so freeing, um, to walk out my door in a little town. We, I, I've been telling people there's 2,200 people in this town. We in towns. Kathy looked it up on Google and it's like 1,700. I'm going. Yeah. We're, even, we're even smaller than that. You know? <laughs> I thought the town I was living in, actually, but or well, not living in. We don't even technically have an address because of where we're at, where I'm going to be at. But the pi town of Pie Town, yeah, two hours away. And that's the technical. Um, like city address, I guess we'd be in, but there's 180 people there. So what, what do you believe about life and about you and about change? You've always got to take the first step to find out, you know, like, um, I believe it's, it's always good. You know, it it might end up in the end that you might feel like you fail or that it wasn't the right thing, but it's good because at least you took that step. Right. To try. And you're alive. And you're you're still alive. Yeah. Do you think that sometimes like the last young man you helped that passed recently too, though, you you look and you go, I have an opportunity. He he got an op you got to help in an opportunity because what, what Ben has done is with people is these are folks who were, you know, terminal, but obviously the one person is defying the odds, but he goes out of his way to plan a nice, wonderful life for these people. And you gave that young man a really interesting life the last year or so of his life. And, but you also saw him deteriorate yeah. and, and die. We, we don't get, if we're lucky, he got, that, that kid got 14 years. Um, if we're lucky, you know, maybe we get 50 or 70 or 80 or, you know, I, I used to say, you know, when, when we hit adult diapers, I don't want to be alive anymore. But then, you know, the more I try them on, I'm, I'm OK with it. You know, as long as I'll change them for you, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> but but you only get so many years on this planet. And, and don't you think the thing that we cheat ourselves with is we fail to live, to yeah. come alive. We just exist and that's what Kathy and I were so sick of is just existing in the same place. We had a beautiful home with neighbors. We loved everybody like that, but it was like, we were just existing and it wasn't like we were coming alive, you know? That's the, that's the thing is it's like, and I, I like how you put that, like you, you can be alive wherever you are, but you don't become alive. If that makes sense. Like uh -huh. you're living, but you're not truly alive until you start taking the steps of thinking or of doing what might become what you need to do for the rest of your life. And don't you think failure is a huge part of that? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's, I look think from it's important to fail sometimes, but not in the way that people expect. Like, you know, like, um, or the thing that people will think they fail and they don't, it's just not what they wanted. So, so if you were writing a story about Ben Elliott's life and you get, you know, you get these chapters and, and so you've had this working with terminally ill people. Um, and that's just, I mean, and I don't mean this in a rude way. That's, that was really a hobby. That wasn't a job. That was yeah. something you did. That was, that was the thing that, that actually breathed life into your soul. Yeah, 100%. Selling fish didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I like working on the boat back in the day, but. So you've had a really, you are having a very interesting life. What are the things that, what are your demons? Man, I didn't know I was going to ask you that because I, I have never thought of it that way. But I'm and as I'm asking you, I'm thinking to you myself, know, what are my demons? I people. And I say that in the sense and it's funny, I don't want to bring like 
political ideology in here, but the fact that, and, you know, people say like, like the people here and the service you get here is the same exact service you get everywhere else. But I've traveled enough and clearly you have too to find out that when you go to other states, you have younger people that are serving you and they're on top of their stuff a lot more than, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, um, yeah, I think I lost it. I lost the question there. <laughs> so you said your demons are people. Okay. Um, I guess negative people, I should say. Um, you know what I mean? Like, cause we, we say the, the, the only people that can stop ourselves are ourselves right but then we get into the, the rhetoric of listening to what other people have to feel and say and we have to step away from that and know that it's not up to them it's up, up to us because we really i don't feel like we should have to have demons but we all we all do um it's an, it's, don't people you think can't agree with one another and love one another just because they have different different belief systems Right. Well, we can, but we, it seems to me that in Oregon, we've lost that. Yeah. It's, we've lost that ability to live and let live. Yeah. Uh, in Montana, it is alive and well, um, you know, and people don't like when I compare the two, but I don't give a shit. Um, there's a, there, if, if you can't look, I think the thing for me that, that is the saddest of all is that people, because they're afraid of what other people are going to say and what they're, you know, what they're, if they're going to shun them, um, they, Oh God, I don't know. Well, they're, they're one exactly. thing. <laughs> and I, I hate getting on the vax and all that stuff, but you know what I mean? They did, they, they did things because what I can't, what bothers me the most is that we are such creatures of, um, of we're, we're kind of sheep where we, we would rather have everybody think, okay, they did, they, they're doing the right thing. They did this rather than, I mean, I know one of the things I feared when leaving was people were going, Oh my God, what, why would you do that? You're crazy. I mean, you have everything here. Why would you do that? And, and, and then what if I, I did move and everything failed? Well, it wasn't, it wasn't like the most um, bump free, uh, landing no um, it's not you know, for, for us it has not been bump free but you know what just last week everything a bunch of stuff came together and it was like god just kind of went boom yeah now now we're set we're moving and and i get to go out and 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 do what i love doing which is challenge people on what they believe um in addition to this podcast this is a whole new project i'll tell people about later but it's going to be a whole new angle for us and it's always scary when you do stuff that's that's hard. That's why your story kind of really rang with me because I thought, God, you're only in your 30s and you are willing to just go. And, and this didn't like I mean, you've been planning it a little bit, but it kind of. But the thought was there. But then just suddenly I got online and I was like, OK, I can do this in a month. And then it was, hey, do you want to come down on the first? And I bought my plane ticket yesterday. So what that, and you just, you saying that you can see it, that is that you're scared, you're, but not, not fearful, but, but, yeah. but, 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 but going, okay, this is like a big change for me. And you haven't, you, you guys now, by the time this airs, um, his friends will probably know, but even your friends, yeah, I love the way you did this because Benjamin put out a hint about the pictures of Oregon and how he's going to miss some stuff, but it was, but it was a hint. You'd have to be paying attention <laughs> Um, if you, or, you know, if you have a you, little knowledge, <laughs> yeah, you'd have to, but that's what, it's a relational tool you use. So you have to have a little bit of knowledge, um, and be willing to go there and think about it. And that's when I messaged you and said, what, what are you doing? You're leaving. Yeah. You're leaving. Yeah. Um, I think I have like four friends that know I'm actually going. Um, and part of that was because I didn't want to find a reason to not go oh tell me you more know, about that. tell I, I want to dig a I little was afraid more. that just i mean i don't you know I, I have a lot i do have a lot of friends but like 
you kind of find over the years, like I stopped going back to the coast, you know, it's only two hours away, but I stopped going for five and a half years because I'd get out there and nobody would really want to kick it, hang out, except for those few people. So I made sure that they knew. But, um, and, you know, and that's part of it is like, I feel like you, you start losing connection with people, even if you, you try to try hard to keep that connection. But if that connection's lost, I'm also not going to try putting it back together and let you know everything I'm doing with my life. But you purposely, because don't you think most of us, like we fish, we throw out a line. Yeah, I'm thinking of leaving. And they said, why would you leave? You didn't want anybody else's opinion. This was Ben right. Elliott's decision. Benjamin was going to figure this out for himself. Yeah. yeah. And then once you figured it out, then you say it. Cause it's like, I'm already, I've got a plane ticket. I'm in my hand. Yeah. And I like you brought that opinion thing up. Cause I mean, de completely different subject, but in Oregon, you don't get opinions. Why? What do you mean? Like when, like whether it's politically or just whatever, it's like, Oh, there's one, there's one talking point. Works. Yeah, we are so extreme one way or the other that if you are on one side and you don't believe um, like same sex couple shouldn't get married or whatever, you know, but then those same exact people, the opposite people think, oh, well, you shouldn't have your guns. Right. But like, like, where do you like, you know, opinions, we should have our own. And I guess in a sense, opinions are rights in a sense. You know, you I, don't, agree. I agree. You don't really get those rights in Oregon. Like if I believe unless, unless you have the unless you have the opinion of the ideology in charge. Yes. You know what I mean? There's one. So here's the message we want everybody to have. And this is what you say and this is what you don't say. And anybody that questions it, um, then you are shunned or silenced or um I had uh, we had a job with a company doing some travel stuff and there was actually two people from Eugene who wrote that company and told them that I was an anti-vaxxer and I'm this and I'm this and I'm this. And in the end, we lost the gig and it cost us a, a dream job we wanted um, our our standing up for our values. But two fuckheads um, had the had the and, and it does anger me. Because they, they went behind my back and write letters to these people and to try to ruin me. So that's the thing that I think is so nasty that happens a lot in Oregon is that um, if you don't believe what we believe, then you're Satan, you yeah. know, and and it it isn't like that everywhere. And you know that and I know that because I traveled and even even in eastern Oregon, it's not like that. No, and. Um, you, God, you would have loved this. So a couple of years ago when like the, the Black Lives Matter protests and, uh, were starting and stuff, which you know, I won't lie, I, I support the, the movement itself. I, I don't just don't support like the destruction of right. cities and buildings, you know, but here, whether it's Eugene or Portland, you bring the two groups together and Eugene was definitely much better. Um, you know, like the, the the BLM crowd wasn't ever trying to necessarily be violent, but at the same time, suddenly you bring both the Proud Boys and them together, whether it's here or in Portland, you know somebody's going to get shot. Right. You go to Arizona and you know what they do? Proud Boys stand on one side of the street, Black Lives Matter stands on the other side of the street, and they just chant and they protest like they should. Right. You know, it's like well, because it's because I think it's still seen in parts other parts of America as this is healthy discussion. Yeah. In in Oregon, what often happens is it's manipulation, it's coercion and it's it's you. This is the right way to think. And if you don't think this, then you are. And then they, and then we bully and then we call names and then now we call names. I mean, Eugene Weekly's blasted me so many times. <laughs> They, they don't even talk to me. They don't even know me. They've never interviewed me. When, when they, when I ran for secretary of state, they didn't endorse me and they never even talked to me. So how do you know what I'm talking about doing if, and you're going to endorse Kate Brown because she's a Democrat and you're going to have nothing to do with me. And um, there's even a business in Eugene 
and they and I go in there all the time and they had all the pictures of all the Democrats on the wall. And I'm friends with the owner. And I said, um, how often does she come in here and get products from you? Never. <laughs> so I'm in here, you know me, and you automatically put the Democrat picture up there and I'm paying and coming to your business. And she said, I, I know, I'm sorry, it's just, but that's who we have to support. And I thought, you know, in a decent world, you'd call up and say, Rick, I know you're always in here, but these are my politics. This is what I'm going to do. I can totally deal with that. But, you know, I, what, what, the, that is just when it got really crazy and ugly. And, and um, so is part of your journey, is this part of it getting away from, um, really away from Oregon? Yeah. Um, I think the number, the number one reason I think overall, and I, I didn't want to make it a political thing at all, but the, just the extremism here that everybody just, it's like, you're either so damn far right or so damn far left that you don't, nobody's going to agree and it's okay not to agree, but I mean, I feel like you and I probably actually agree on more stuff than we we realize right. there's definitely things we don't, but that's not going to change what I feel about you. But ninety nine point nine percent of the rest of the state is not like that. Like, like when oh you voted for Trump, you're a POS. No, I don't like that you voted for Trump, but you are still this person. Right. And of course, me. Oh, you didn't vote for Donald Trump. You must have voted for Biden. <laughs> Nah. <laughs> right, but we make assumptions about what we're doing. So with your with this new with this new gig, what what are you when you step out of uh, you get on the plane and you fly into this place and you're driving up that two hours out of that little town? Um, what what are you going to be? What's what are you going to be thinking about? I don't know. Um, I'm sure my mind will be thinking, but I'm just going to be doing a lot of looking, seeing the beauty. Like, um, I don't know if I sent, I think I sent, might've sent you a, I took a screenshot of a video about where I'm going to be at and just knowing that I'm getting ready to go from the city, which, I mean, you know, Eugene's not a huge city by any stretch, but I'm going to be moving from here to a town that's a quarter of the size yachts yeah <laughs> you well, know? That's and i'm just gonna take in the beauty and take in that moment you know so i don't really know what i'm quite what i'm gonna be thinking i think it's just gonna almost be speechless and i think it's one of those things where your heart's just gonna warm up your soul is gonna warm up and it's gonna i think at that point it's gonna hit me and be like yep this is what i needed to do ben would you keep in touch with me Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I know you're going to have trouble, but when you get into that little 180 town, 80 people town, and you get on Wi Fi or something, just send me a video or a little message or something. And I yeah, can yeah. And um, good luck. Hey, thanks. Yeah. Um, text me your number. Um, I should, um, I should have just enough Wi Fi service in the evenings that I okay. can actually text here and there. Okay. Um, anytime I'm in town, yeah, I'll definitely give you a shout out. Maybe we do a follow up okay. video or. Stop. Yeah, like like when you plan to go into town because you don't have enough Wi-Fi to get me, you, you'd be like, well, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, no, I can't even post. I won't be able to post photos online even. God, you're gonna be in hell. But it's actually good. I actually, I think I'm for the most part gonna deactivate um, social media and stuff just because yeah. I need to change well, that much. Yeah, why? Why have it? Hey, I'm gonna miss you. Um, I'm so excited for you though, and um, I can't wait. At least we have to do this in a year because I want to see I want people to see um, the good, the bad and the ugly. And and keep that in mind, too. Remember, there's no failure. Um, hmm. There are a lot of things that don't work out quite like you plan. Um, but I'll tell you, uh, if you just knuckle down and trust God and kind of hang in there and keep your. You know, I, I pretend like I'm hanging on to his garment <laughs> going, you yeah. know, it's like and luckily up there, you know. I'm like 9,000 feet higher, so I'm a mile and a half. Well, you're going to be way closer, <laughs> you're be way closer than the rest of us and everything. Hey, Ben, thanks again. I appreciate your time, buddy.
Thank you, my man. We'll talk to you soon, all right? I right, see you. Be good. Yeah, well, not, too. not too good. You know what I mean? No. Have fun. Never. <laughs> so, again, that's uh, Benjamin Elliott, and uh, he's uh, on the adventure of his life. So, what do we, what do we learn from this young man? Um, you know, everybody doesn't have to move out of Oregon. I, I, I obviously, and I don't want you to. Um, I love Oregon, and so does Ben. I mean, we love the place. Um, but if you're called to do something different, it's like, remember we had Richard Gorsuch on the other night and he was a painter who 40 years ago was told to go paint. And it wasn't, he said, it wasn't a, about a finished product. It was about the journey, about doing the process. And, and I love that because that's really your life. And I guess, why do we talk about these things? Why do we spend time with this? Because you, there's this whole bunch of people out there walking around with their hearts beating, but they're not living. You're not, you're not, you're not experiencing life and you're bored. And because of X, Y, and Z, like Ben, best advice ever, don't tell your friends what you're going to do. Just go do it because of all the best. Well, let's, let's get the yellow pad out and we'll write the pros and cons of staying or leaving. When you're told to leave, get the hell out. And that's what people don't understand. You know, Kathy and I were told to get the hell out. We did numerous reasons, um, but we did what we were told. And a year to the day yesterday is that yesterday is the day, or excuse me, I'd have to put Monday, the 29th. Is that what it was? 30th. Um, that was the day we arrived in Montana last year. We've been here one year and I'm going to write a book and it's been a hell of a year. Some really amazing moments and some really not very amazing moments, <laughs> but they all make me who I am right now. And you know what? In six months, I don't want to be the same as I am now. At 70, I don't want to be as, as what I was when I was 63, but you got to, you got to move. And that doesn't mean moving that way. That means, but you have to physically and spiritually move into new territory. And if a 33 year old man can do it and a 63 year old man can do it, you've got no excuse. Um, we want to thank our sponsors and everybody that uh, helps us with our program. And I uh, want to thank Ben for being on here. Um, I will talk with you later. What is tomorrow night? Thursday? Oh, shut up, Rick. <clears throat> so weird listening to myself talk like that. Um, yeah. Um, our sponsors tonight are Chris Dental Family Dentistry out of Eugene. Um, here in Montana, Montana Oral Surgeons, our new client. We want to welcome them on board and thank them for their support. And also BS Free MD. And what have they got to say? Well, let's find out. They got a new podcast coming out tomorrow. Uh, we have a great show that's dropping this Thursday. Uh, pleasantly surprised. And this interview is going to go for two episodes because it was so good. Yes. Jake Thomas, the owner of Life Like Jake coaching he served in the marines for four years got out was directionless became uh alcoholic and drug addict uh eventually pulled himself out of that to start this physical training emotional training diet training business that's just blown up because it's like a mini really david, a great it's story like a mini david goggins Con yeah with kind of with with, with, his, with way with, with way less swearing than david goggins yes but it's such an inspirational story. I call this episode the fall before the rise of Jake Thomas. Um, such a, an amazing story. And so I think people will be able to, anyone will be able to glean some stuff out of his struggles uh, in his life and how he used that to actually turn himself into his own mentor and pull himself up as we call into his own mountain peak and uh now he's helping others do the same so that's what we got coming this week you got anything other exciting to, to share with rick and the, the fans out there it, it really it's a it's a great story it goes this week and then next week is kind of you know what did he do with this disaster that he had produced all right dancer land have fun all right and hey, i want to thank tim and may for their support as well. I also want to recommend another podcast and I'm just, I don't do this all the time and it's not like they need me uh, to help them. Joe Rogan and Jordan Peterson are two of the biggest podcasters in the country. I think Jordan Peterson is one of the great minds of this generation. 
and he will go down like a Churchill. Um, but Rogan recently interviewed Jordan Peterson, and this will blow your freaking mind. Um, it is something you need to listen to. Some of you, it's going to make you mad. Some of you, it's going to challenge you. Some of you, you're going to stand up like I did and just go, oh my God, that I feel like this, this podcast and what they're talking about is a doorway that's going to open up this bullshit and, and get it. Cause I, I, ref, after listening to it today, it's episode number 1933. Okay. So it's on Joe Rogan. And I'm going to put this on here, 1933. I just highly recommend you go look at it. I listened to it today and I came out and going, you know what? I'm speaking out. I'm just, I'm taking it to a new level. I am not going to do this. I'm not even going to be careful anymore. I don't care. Facebook, you can throttle me. YouTube, you can shut me down. Um, and all you people can call and do your little bullshit because you're not listening. Go listen to the thing and then tell me that I'm on the wrong track. Um, cause I'm not listening anymore, uh, right? It, I, things are going to change around here and this is opening a door to a lot of people. And if you are stuck in what was going on two years ago or last year, or you still believe that people in Washington are doing what they're supposed to be doing, you still believe the CDC, you still think Anthony Fauci is a good guy, go listen to this video and then you tell me the same thing. And if you do, that just tells me you're ignorant. Um, we're moving on and we're doing something different. So here we go. It's our turn to have our voice heard and you don't get to shut us up. You don't get to bully us anymore. And we're just going to shut you on down on our page if you do. The world is changing. Your days are numbered for this ideology because it's bullshit. So have a great evening. Please share this on your page with other people. Um, because I think they need to hear this and what Ben had to say as well. Tomorrow night, we've got a local Eugene guy, Eli Mazat. He's a glass blower, but not just any glass blower. This guy like blows glass for Disney. He has a book that's world famous called Shot Glasses. He sent me a copy of it. It's amazing. Um, he's going to be on the show tomorrow night. And then on Monday, we're going to do a Montana story, which will be brought to you by the Montana Oral Surgeons. And this is the big sky dog sled race. This is like a precursor to the Iditarod and it's a couple hours from here, but we're going to be talking live uh, to a woman who's just her story is fascinating. Uh, she puts this thing on, you know, with help, but she is uh, the, the spearheader. And so she's going to be talking to us from her little place up in Lincoln, Montana. Um, it'll be super interesting and I'm getting to do it tomorrow. We're taping it up because she has things to do. All right. Honor our sponsors. Um, use your voice. Stand up. Go listen to that podcast and you will be revitalized. I promise. Good day.